Uh, Leon Black of Apollo Manage Global Management is stepping down as CEO months ahead of schedule, but more importantly, he's giving up his chairman spot. For more, let's bring in Bloomberg's Shanali Bassick. She covers Wall Street for us. Shanali, was this a surprise? Uh, it certainly was, Matt, and it's mostly because, as you said, he's stepping back as chairman. We already knew he would be stepping down as CEO, though that's sooner than expected as well. Leon Black will stay, the largest, uh, the largest shareholder of Apollo, but it is a humongous move for somebody who has led Apollo for 31 years. So what does this mean for shareholders? Leon Black is still the largest, but um, the owners of Apollo haven't seen much change in that part of their wealth recently. Yeah, it's absolutely right. You have Apollo's shares really stagnant this year compared with Blackstone, right, which is up more than 13 percent. People are seeing huge growth in private equity, rebound in values, deals happening left and right. Apollo itself is in the middle of uh, a deal, it's a $11 billion deal to merge with Athene, a huge insurance company, really a fast-growing firm that was the brainchild of Mark Rowan, who is now the CEO, uh, becoming the CEO of Apollo, it's still unsure how this is all going to work out. It's a bit of a confusing deal for some investors who don't know what an insurance company would mean to the private uh, equity value of a, uh, uh, the value of a private equity firm. So a lot of questions still in the air for Apollo, even as it starts to turn the page in terms of management and turn the page further away from this Jeffrey Epstein saga that has been such a dark cloud over Apollo for really so long. Yeah, uh, Leon Black reportedly paid Jeffrey Epstein $158 million for tax services. Now, that's not new, but it's the kind of thing that I continue to wonder about. What on earth does someone do to earn $158 million from someone who already really knows what he's doing in finance. Yeah, it was really a head scratcher, especially that amount, $158 million, was such a big portion of Jeffrey Epstein's own wealth. Remember, Deckert, a law firm, did an, a review, an independent re investigation of Leon ba Black's affairs with uh, Jeffrey Epstein, found that there was no criminal activity, but yet that number still was a cloud over his head. It was a cloud over Apollo. They bought up Jay Clayton, who's now going Going to be the former SEC chairman who's going to now be the chair of Apollo. So it really did take a lot to kind of distance Apollo from the saga, even though it was mostly Black's relationship himself. I just got to ask you quickly about an unrelated story, but mm -hmm. elsewhere in finance, we see BlackRock starting to sell basically factor ETFs for very low fees. What's the story there? Yeah, it's a great question. It all comes down to fees, right, Matt? Uh, you know, private equity is raking it in, barely budging those fees. But you have BlackRock, iShares really lowering their ETF fees again as Vanguard has really helped them really drive this race to the bottom forward. Something to note, iShares was more than a third of the AUM at Black uh, Rock, sorry, Black Rock, which uh, was 8.6 <laughs> trillion in assets last year. But you know what? Even though they were more than a third of the AUM, active management was almost half the fees. So that tells you the story right there is how do you grow faster in terms of revenue, not just assets under management when you are at this race to the bottom in fees in the ETF industry.